If you love farmhouse decor as much as I do, then you're going to want to stick around because I have several Dollar Tree high-end farmhouse decor DIYs that I know you're going to love. So let's jump right in. Okay, y'all, when I tell you that these are super beginner friendly, I'm not even kidding you. So for the first couple DIYs, we are going to use my Chalk Couture transfers on these Dollar Tree farmhouse animals. Now, unfortunately, I forgot to hit the record button on the on my actual camera I always record in two places one for like TikTok and Instagram and that is from the side but I do time-lapse those so in the beginning of each one of these you're gonna see my time-lapse slowed down a little bit just because like I said I forgot to hit the record button I got a little bit ahead of myself but for the cow I used my chalk couture buffalo check small transfer now we do have small buffalo check and large buffalo check print but for this particular project i use the small buffalo check i also had these dixie bell rub on transfers and originally i was going to put this fresh and local on the cow but i ultimately decided that i didn't really like it so i just left him plain and look how cute he turned out let me know what y'all think would you have put the um, pattern on there and the wording or just the pattern For the next Dollar Tree Farmhouse Animal, this one was super simple. Yet again, all I did was transfer on my Chalk Couture Chicken Wire Transfer. I thought that that was definitely fitting. And I kind of just love the simplicity of these. A lot of times, I just put so many details into things. But like I said, I was just really, really digging the simplicity. So I left them pretty much plain. And this particular transfer actually comes with four different patterns in one transfer. So you cut it up into four. And I just absolutely love this chicken wire transfer. And I did transfer those on with my white chalk paste. Now for the third and final Dollar Tree Farmhouse Animal, I took my Chalk Couture shiplap that I actually got back at Christmas time. That's why I always tell y'all when you guys see a transfer that you like, grab it because they do retire and they do sell out very quickly. So this particular transfer is not available anymore. So I did just transfer on that shiplap onto my pig and I love that they're reusable as long as you wash them immediately after use and you do not use any other paint other than chalk paint or chalk paste um, then these last a really long time as long as you wash them immediately so I do not recommend chalk paint you can use it but you will not get the complete life out of your transfer so I definitely definitely recommend to use chalk paste because it's specifically formatted to go into the silk, scene, silk screen transfers. However, if you're in a pinch and all you have is chalk paint, you can totally use that, but do not use acrylic, do not use fabric paint, don't use anything other than chalk paint or chalk paste because you will ruin your transfers. Now, if you guys wanna learn how to get 40% off of everything on the Chalk Couture site, make sure to text my number the word chalk and I'll get y'all that info. So for this little piggy, I felt that he was just missing a little something. So in that mix of farmhouse rub on transfers by Dixie Bell. I am in no way shape or form affiliated with them. I just love their products. I did go ahead and cut off some of this cotton and I transfer that on to his backside. Now, I'm not really too sure if I like the pattern or if I should have kept that off, but I know you guys will let me know down in the comments below what you guys think.
Moving on to DIY number four. If you guys watched my last video, it was a Valentine's Day video. I will leave it in the pinned comment as well as the cards in the right hand corner of this video. Um, but I had cut the truck off of this wreath rail and I set the rail aside for a different project. So we're going to use the wreath rail in this particular project. Now, y'all, I had no idea what I was going to do with this. I don't even know how I came up with this idea. So this is actually for like deco mesh or something like that, but I personally just don't use deco mesh like that. So I got the bright idea to stain it with my Waverly antique wax, and then I wiped off the excess wax with a paper towel and then used my hot blow dryer to dry it. Next, I took these farmhouse fabric strips from Dollar Tree that came in the same pack, and I started by cutting them in half, and then I also cut them in half again, leaving me with four pieces of each. I then just tied them to the end of my rail wreath, my wreath rail. <laughs> Y'all know I can't talk for nothing. I can't talk to save my life. I asked for Santa to uh, give me the gift to t be able to talk right. And I guess I was a naughty girl this year. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, y'all, I knotted that on the end of my wreath rail, and I just alternated the patterns like you see here. Now, I should have grabbed a few packs of these strips, but I honestly thought that there were more um, strips of each pattern. I did not even read it that it said three strips, um, so no big deal. I just um, tied them on as many as I had, and then I wanted to put a sign on this anyway, so it was no big deal. So once I was done tying on the fabric, then I just kind of went in my stash and held a few different things up to the end to see what would look right. Now, I actually like this one right here. I should have used that, but ultimately I went with this little mini house. Um, like I said, I held up several different things, and I just didn't really like like any of them but now looking on camera I should have used that black one y'all know my favorite saying hindsight is 2020 but that's okay I love the way that it turned out and I just used this little um, house picture frame and I took the plastic off of the picture frame and then took that little piece of paper out and I used my glue stick to glue that to the backing I then made sure that it was nice and stuck to that backing by using my finger to make sure it was nice and smooth. And then I used my chip brush and some antique wax. My chip brushes are always linked in my Amazon shop. I used to use these little baby mini brushes. Those were my absolute favorite, but everybody else loved them so much that they sold them out. I can't even get them anymore. And I was actually the one who first started to use those mini chip brushes and a lot of you guys actually sent some to me. So I do still have some, but I don't know, y'all. I'm so weird. I'm like afraid to use them because I don't want to use them up and not be able to take not be able to get them anymore. So I found this alternative on Amazon. Unfortunately, they do shed a lot, which is super annoying, but these are the only ones that I have found that are the most similar to the mini, mini chip brushes. So I have them linked down below for you guys in my Amazon shop. So anyway, I use my antique wax and the chip brush to dry brush, not only the backing, but the frame as well going all the way around the frame, all the way around the little window, 
and the edges and then I took this Dixie Belle rub-on transfer and I cut up a few different I started by transferring on that organic part so it says organic product but I did not use the product part I just used organic like I said and it actually has this um, stick that comes in the tube of the transfers that way you have something to scratch it with because basically what you're doing is creating friction and then the friction releases that rub on transfer from that plastic piece but you want to be very very careful do not go ripping up your plastic because then you're going to rip your wording it does take a little bit of kind of using the stick to cause the friction then you want to pull up your plastic just a little bit making sure that it's sticking down to your surface and then if you see a spot that is not quite stuck down then you just continue to rub it down um, pull it up a little bit more and continue that process until it's completely transferred on one. little disclaimer I got my little buddy here eating so no that's not your dog no that's not your baby it's my baby just so y'all know but anyway um, I put the backing back in once I was done transferring on my image and then I took the chickens from the organic chicken farm or the chicken farm transfer cut away the chickens just because I knew obviously it would not fit but I thought that it would look super cute at the top of this little picture frame once I was done that, all I had to do was rip off the little stand. Um, it also had this little metal piece, which I wasn't too worried about, but I just uh, made sure that it was nice and flat. And then I glued that down to the other side of my wreath rail. And that was it for this DIY. Now I can't figure out, like I like it, but then I'm like, I don't know, does it look weird? Um, this was just a little different for me. So I'm curious to know what y'all think of this DIY. For the next DIY, this one is another super easy one. You could literally do this with your eyes closed. So I take this house from Dollar Tree. Y'all, I cannot believe the farmhouse items that Dollar Tree is getting. They are really, really impressing me more and more every day. So anyway, I take this house and I dry brush some of my antique wax all over it. Now I got a comment like, oh my goodness, you literally dry brush everything I can't even believe it I don't like it and I make this disclaimer every video if you do not like dry brushing this is just for inspiration I am making home decor for my home sharing it with you guys if you do not like dry brushing you can totally leave it out you can totally do whatever design you want to do but I love dry brushing it suits my decor and I love it I'm going to continue to do it so I dry brush that on and then I take this chicken transfer and I have had this transfer forever I have used it over and over and over so it did lose some of its stickiness so all I did was just kind of hold it down in certain spots that I felt it wasn't quite sticking and I transfer that on with my black chalk paste pulled it up very slowly because if you pull it up too quickly then you can have some bleeding then once I had my chicken transferred on I made sure it was nice and dry and I made a double jute bow and I hot glued that down to my little chicken and look how gorgeous this turned out For the next DIY, we're going to take another one of these little farmhouse pieces from my haul. 
and I just start by holding it over one of the images to make sure that it fit. When I realized that it was a perfect fit, I just cut the transfer away from the others. And by the way, aren't these farmhouse images like absolutely gorgeous? Um, I will find this little tube of rub, rub on transfers for y'all and I will link it for you. Like I said, I'm, I'm not affiliated. Um, I just absolutely love their products and love these images. So I love to share that with you guys. But anyway, I once again just transfer on that image to my little tag sign. And then it kind of hung over a little bit at the bottom. So I just sanded that smooth, cut the tag off of the top. And then of course, y'all know I love my dry brushing, like I said. And I just dry brush all the way around this in the middle of this little tag and then I also dry brush the beads as well and that quick and easy you have a high-end looking little farmhouse decor tag. Okay, y'all, DIY number seven, we're gonna take this tag sign from Dollar Tree that I got back at fall time, I believe. Yeah, it was fall. And I start by taking off the tag and the hanger. And then I also use my blow dryer to heat up that sticker and remove it from the backing. I then take some white Waverly chalk paint and I give it a distress coat. Now, I like distress coats of paint for many reasons. Of course, y'all know it's very rustic, very farmhouse. You use a lot less paint and it's a lot less dry time. So I do that for many reasons, not just the look. Um, but once it was completely dry, I used my blow dryer because y'all know I am so impatient. I then... I was going to first transfer on the image and then dry brush, but I figured that I should probably dry brush first. So once again, I used my chip brush and dry brush all the way around this sign. And then I go ahead and transfer on this absolutely stunning farmhouse image. Now, I have found some tricks with these rub-on transfers. So it really works well if you kind of pull up your plastic on an angle while you are creating that friction to get it to stick on your sign. So I did just want to give you all that little tip. And then I had this absolutely stunning ribbon from back at fall time when it went on sale from Walmart. And I just made a simple bow of that farmhouse ribbon. I glued that onto the top. And then I also made another bow with my burlap from Dollar Tree and I glued that to the first bow and that was it. Look how gorgeous this sign is. It was so easy to make and I would have picked it up at any high-end store so let me know down in the comments what y'all think. All right, friends, I don't know how this always happens, but I feel like I always save the best for last. If y'all are still here, you are the real OGs. Give me a farm animal down in the comment section so that I know that you watch this video all the way through and you're still here because if you guys did not know, watching my videos from start to finish really, really helped me when you guys skip through. It actually hurts my channel, so I just greatly appreciate you guys and all the support you give me because none of what I do would be possible without you. So anyway, we're going to start off with one of these wheels from Dollar Tree and I cut the tag off. Then I'm going to take this greenery that I got from Timu. Y'all know that's like my favorite new online shop, you guys. 
they sent me so much good stuff to do videos and I just could not wait to use it. So I also have a discount code for you guys because I used the Timu wreath in the last video. They actually gave you guys a new discount code for 30% off. So I will leave that in the pinned comment as well as the description box but i just took the greenery i believe i used seven at the top seven at the bottom and i just joined them together with this green jute that i had and then i also tied on and wrapped around another piece of jute where i was going to glue down the greenery that way i had something to glue to because if you try to glue to metal it just doesn't stick it it, it doesn't work out trust me so I put that on there and then I glued my greenery to that little piece. Next, I'm going to take that absolutely gorgeous farmhouse ribbon that we used in the previous DIY and I'm going to show you guys how to make a nice big fluffy bow. Now this intimidated me for a really long time but once I learned how to do it it's so easy you're not even going to believe it. So you're just going to start with about eight and eight inches tail and then you're going to just pull loops up and then you're just going to kind of twist around as you do a new loop as you can see I'm doing here I, I feel like I'm not the best at explaining but you're just going to kind of pull up a loop as big or as little as you like making sure you have enough in your hand so that way you can tie it and it all stays together and you just continue to go kind of around and make it as fluffy or as not <laughs> as you like once you have it as fluffy as you like and you leave another eight inch tail at the other end then you're going to pinch it together and tie it as you see that I just did again I don't know I, I feel like I don't explain right I feel like I stumble over my words and I get all like nervous I don't know you guys but anyway once I had it tied and I cut off the excess jute I cut dovetails to the ends then I just glued that to the middle of my greenery next I took these two pieces of scrap wood that I had in my stash and it was literally perfect you guys it must have been meant to be because I don't even have a saw inside I could have ran out and got it but I was hoping and praying that I had some wood that would be perfect for what I'm about to show you so I just glued both of these pieces together with some large popsicle sticks cutting them to make sure that they fit and using my gorilla hot glue to glue them down again to glue them together Next, I take some white Waverly chalk paint and give this a distress coat, and I also make sure to coat the edges as well. Once my sign was completely dry then, surprise, surprise, y'all know I used my chip brush and some antique wax to dry brush on this little sign. And I also did a few circular motions in random spots to make it look more realistic. Now I had this homestead transfer in my stash. I actually do believe it's on the site right now. Um, as always, whatever Chalkator items that I can link for you guys, I will put in one link and you can add and subtract from that link as you wish uh, but I just like to put them in one spot and I'm also going to link some board erasers for you guys I get questions on how to wash these you literally just run them under like um, warm water and I use my sprayer at first to spray off as much paste as I can and then I use my board eraser to wipe them under running water on the front and back so I just transferred on that wording with my pesto chalk paste for the greenery and my black chalk paste for the wording I pulled that up made sure it was dry and then I glued that down to the middle of my sign making sure that I pushed it a little bit to the right that way the wording would not be hidden behind the bow and then I I just reinforce that with some hot glue on the back and to make the glue dry quicker y'all know my impatient ass I use my blow dryer on the cool setting to hit that and make it dry quicker and that was it for this sign oh 
my gosh you guys i swear to goodness i absolutely love this so so much and i will be displaying this in my home for years to come so that was it for this video you guys thank you so so much for hanging out with me today if nobody has told you today you are absolutely stunning you are worthy you are gorgeous you literally can do anything you set your mind to especially coming from an addict eight years clean if I can do it I know you can do it as well and as always if you guys want any ketone information on how I just lost 60 pounds in six months or if you want chalk couture information or how you can build an online income text my number the word biz for online income the word chalk for chalk couture or the word ketones for info to the number on the screen with that being said don't forget to let me know which project was your favorite down below and i love y'all with all my heart and soul i'll catch you in the next one bye check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the diy fam here to your right